Good morning. This is Brother Raul Masonette. Um, man, what a storm we had last time, right? You know, hail, all kinds of crazy stuff. But, um, you know, when it came down to it, man, I couldn't go outside and, and stop the hail from, um, you know, smashing into the roof of my house, man. You know, I go to my kid's room, man, and obviously, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's some damage, there's water leaking, you know, and um, I'm thankful that we have insurance. Hopefully that that will cover it. But, um, you know, it makes me think, you know what I'm saying? How many storms come into our lives that we're not um, prepared for or that we think that how our life is is not going to be touched or, or, or damaged by it? Um you know, I'm just, I'm just blown away, you know, at the ferociousness of the storm. And um, I want to use that as an analogy today, um, you know, just to, just to get you to understand, you know, that there are going to be storms that are going to come. But um, Jesus, amen, no matter how ferocious your storm is, no matter what it is that you are going through, um... It doesn't matter. You know, somebody might be going through a storm or even worse, a dry season. You know what I'm saying? Because storms, you know, can bring life afterwards. A dry season, sometimes it's just like, man, nothing is happening. Um, you know, um, you know, I kept planting and planting. Nothing is growing. You know, you're going through a spiritual famine. And I just want to encourage you today, you know, regardless of whether it's a spiritual famine in your life or a ferocious storm that you have had to encounter, just know that God is faithful. And I am going to introduce you to an amazing Psalms, amen, that is Psalms 60, verse 11 and 12, okay, so that that way you can get your perspective right, amen. Um, it says, give us help from trouble. Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Through God we will do valiantly, for he, excuse me, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. I don't care what your enemy is. If your enemy is homelessness, if your enemy is joblessness, if your enemy is, um, um, a, a place where you find yourself like nothing is growing, nothing is happening. You have done your best. You have tried your best. I promise you that if you just take the time to go into the quiet place. And I could almost hear somebody, man, what you talking about, brother Raul? Go to a quiet place, man. I should be able to talk to God and, you know what I'm saying, to him. And he should hear me. I, I, and, and you're right, man. God does hear you. But do you hear him? That's the question. Are you listening to him? Because, you know, I, I, I hear a lot of this a lot of the times, you know, you know, what, what what's going on in other people, in, you know, in your life or in other people's lives. But I, I don't hear you saying what you heard. God, you know, I've never had a problem hearing God, man. And, and, and let me explain to you. There was um there was a time in, in my life where um where for real, for real, you know, I, I was a, a drunken fool and a raving lunatic. You know what I'm saying? And God spoke to me even then, you know, I just didn't want to hear what he had to say. I didn't want to let go of my sin. I, and he would call me and talk to me and I would scream from the top of my lung, leave me alone, leave me alone. People thought I was like for real crazy, you know, and, and I would just, you know, smash 40 ounce of bottles against a wall, you know, just start screaming, you know what I'm saying? I'm toting uh, 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 firearms, you know what I'm saying, and just doing crazy stuff, man, because I literally was tormented, and it wasn't that God was tormenting me, it was that I was tormenting myself by not listening to the voice of God when he told me to let go of certain things in my life, 
Uh, again, you know, the, the Psalms, I love how it says, um, Psalm 60, verse 11 and 12, but I'm going to just focus on verse 11 where it says, give us help from trouble. Give us help from trouble. Do you have a trouble? Do you have a situation, a trial, a tribulation, a storm, a dry season? Is there something that you are going through that you feel that you um, are not going to be able to overcome, that you're not going to be able to overpower, that you are not going to be able to fix? Amen. It's almost like if I had a, pl a plumbing trouble in my home and I was not a plumber, amen, a licensed one at that. But you know what I'm saying? If I try to fix it, I could only fix it for so long. You know, I could jimmy rig it. You know what I'm saying? But eventually my best efforts are not going to hold up to a professional job, amen. And in the same way, man, I mean, with the roof in my home, you know. I can go up to the roof, you know what I'm saying, take um, take a risk of, you know, falling off or uh, um, trying to patch up this thing, you know what I'm saying, and, and it might work for a little bit, you know what I'm saying, but what about when the next storm comes, you know what I'm saying, what do you do when the next storm comes, are you going to be ready for that, are you going to be ready for the next dry season, if you are not in God's word, if you are not trusting in God, look, look, man, it's going to be tough, um, the scripture is very very um very impactful you know when the word of god tells us that um without faith it is impossible to please him what's up man good morning. good morning all right it says without faith it is impossible to please him but those that come to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him you know storms are going to come Storms are going to come. Trials are going to come. Tribulations are going to come. No matter what, you know, you're going to have to deal um, with the unexpected. But look at what it says again. Um, again, Psalms chapter 60, verse 11. It says, give us help from trouble for the help of man is useless. You know, Jeremiah 17, 5, I believe it is. Yep. Well, I think it's 17, 18. Let's look at it. Let me let me see if I can get on there real quick. Jeremiah 17, 18. It's one of my one of my favorite scriptures because I mean it points to a reality, man, that a lot of people want to um want to ignore. Let me see what it is. Yeah, 17, 18. Hopefully this is the right one. What does it say? It says, Let them be ashamed who persecute me. Um but do not let me be put to shame. Let them be dismayed. But do not let me be dismayed. Bring them bring them the day of doom and destroy them with um with trouble destruction. That's not the one I'm talking about. I think it's seventeen five. And it says like this, it says, Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man, it sure is. Cursed is the man who puts his trust in man and makes flesh his strength. And whose heart departs from the Lord. Amen. This is the one. And and, and, and and notice what it says again in Psalm 60. Because I have to go back now. In Psalm 60 verse 11 it says. Give us help from trouble. For the help of man is useless. In Jeremiah 17 5 it says. That, Cursed is the man that puts his trust in man. And whose heart departs from the Lord. I'm not telling you not to trust people. But I am telling you not to put your trust in people. Whose heart are not with God. Amen. And that's important because when when we do so, it says for uh, and it talks about what that person is like. It says, um, uh, "For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see good when it comes." And that's really important, man, because something good can be right in front of you. You know what I'm saying? But you're not going to be able to see it because you have trusted in a person whose heart is not with God. And, and, and a lot of people are out there putting their trust in, in people whose heart are not with God. I mean, the help of man truth, truthfully is useless. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. That's Psalms 127. Amen. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Amen. See, unless God is the architect of the house, unless God is the one who is um, in full control, unless he's the one navigating the ship, unless he's the one behind the wheel, unless he's the, uh, unless he's the one who gives you the blueprints and gives you the permission and the permits to go out and do what you need to do, then obviously there's not going to be, um, you're not going to have the kind of success that you um, would like to have. 
you can like I said about the plumbing job remember you know if you if you know how to fix you know a sink you know what I'm saying of course you know what I'm saying um, you, you, you could probably fix the sink but what if you don't know how to do it what if you just jimmy rigged it to so it can last for just a little bit you know what I'm saying that's what man does we we have jimmy rigged our life our life is broken but we have jimmy rigged it man with with um with with with, with trying to achieve you know um you know uh, how should i say this man we're trying to achieve it all on our own and by ourselves let me share something with you i think you guys going to like this out of my handy dandy jesus calling devotional man i love this thing man and today um reading goes like this I am with you. I am with you and for you. Your constant communication, your constant companion and provider. The question is whether you are with me and for me. Though I never leave you, you can certainly leave me by ignoring me, thinking or acting as if I am not with you. When you feel distance in your relationship, you know where the problem lies. My love for you is constant. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is you who change like shifting sand. Leading circumstances toss you this way and that way. When you feel far from me, whisper my name. This simple act done in childlike faith opens your heart to my presence. Speak to me in love tones. Prepare to receive my love with flow, which flows eternally from the cross. I am delighted when you open yourself to my loving presence. Amen. Um, Genesis 28, 15, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back from this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised, what I have promised you. And I'm going to go one more, Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change he will not change. The question is, are you willing to receive that reality? Are you willing to submit to his word? Surrender to what you think you ought to have or how you think your reality should end up as? Because if you are, then you will succeed in everything that you do. Remember, surrender, succeed, and Excuse me, surrender, submit, and succeed. It's just something that the Lord gave me. And um, and remember, you know, I, I get it. You know, we need each other. We need we we need one another. But um don't 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 surround yourself with foolish um um people who um whose heart are not with God because in doing so you bring yourself into you bring yourself back into the curse which the Lord already nailed that to the cross, but Whenever a person decides that they want to stop listening to God and want to start listening to man, uh, man-made ideas, um, instead of going to the Holy Spirit of God, then you begin to have a problem because in, in, in listening to, to man, um, you all of a sudden become a man-pleaser. What you mean, Brother Raul? I ain't trying to please nobody. No, you're trying to please you. You're a man-pleaser. And... Um, you want it your way. So if God doesn't do it your way, the way that you want him to, then you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden he stops being God, which I hardly think so. Um, but um, this is why a lot of people are, are, are not willing to um, be submitted to um, authority. They're not willing to be um, submitted to, to a pastor. To, um, they're not willing to be real disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, notice what I said, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. I did not say disciples of Brother Raul Mason in Hood Church Life Recovery Ministry or Rhema Word Outreach Center. Now, when you decide that you're going to go ahead and follow the Lord like for real, man, you, you are going to listen to his word. You are going to put it into practice and you're going to do it even if it kills you. 
um, you're going to do it at all costs because when you said yes to him, you were saying no to your life. When you say yes to him, you, you weren't all of a sudden distrusting him. It's almost like, you know, getting into, um, and I'm talking to you guys right now, maybe to, to you young ladies out there, um, you get into a relationship and all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, you're with a person that you find yourself with a person that you can't even trust. I mean, how how you going to get into a relationship and without getting to know that person first, first of all? And what 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 are you saying, brother Raul? Well, let me let me tell you. I'm going to tell you straight up because the truth is that you know, we gotten into this relationship with God now. So are you not going to trust God all of a sudden? All of a sudden, what you, you he doesn't change. So if he doesn't change, that means you have changed. That means that you're the one that has been um, living a life that is causing you to drift away from his truth and his precepts and his and in and, and, and the hope of his glory, which he has for you. I pray that the Lord will continue to help you, lead you and guide you, that he would cause you to think about what I'm saying, because you can turn this around. You can turn to him. And in doing so, I promise you that the. That whatever it is that, it, that, that, that you're going through, whatever dry spell, whatever season of storms that you're experiencing, whatever trial, whatever tribulation, whatever sickness, whatever torment that you might be going through at this moment, if it, whether it be loneliness or, or lunacy, it don't matter. God is able to help you, heal you, and restore you. May the Lord continue to bless you. This is Brother Raul Mason with a word of hope um, during this time of... Um, you know, locked down, you know what I'm saying? Man, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? What you, which, what are you going to do? Are you going to get in God's word? I pray that um that you do. May the Lord continue. Bless you. Love you, man. Love you. I love you. I love you. Peace out.